We're not kidding, you know, there really is nothing like it. Colin Henry has been rather frustrated, stuck on the bench, but the £4 million man comes in for only his third Rangers start since joining from Blackburn, a man for the occasion. Henry will have to keep a check on a speedy Swede. Henrik Larsson has yet to net in an old firm clash. Rangers indeed were one of only two top flight teams that he failed to score against last season. George Albert hasn't exactly been great mates with his coach Stig Advocat recently, but he came on as a sub to rescue Rangers in Europe in midweek, and he really is impossible to ignore as the club's top scorer. Five of his eight goals, though, have come from the penalty spot. 48 hours ago, it didn't look like Craig Burley would make this game, but a, a huge swelling on his knee gradually went down and down, and with Lambert out, Celtic really needed him, and they've got him. Celtic are the champions going into this match. And that means that Rangers have a little score to settle. But then when these two Glasgow Giants meet, there's always something to settle. The Rangers, of course, have by far the better recent record. The Celtic huddle breaks. The referee today is Stuart Dougal in charge of his first Old Firm derby. Here we go. Arsenal, Man U, follow that? OK, we will. And it's Rangers who will get us off and running. Both these teams have only lost once in the Scottish Premier League so far this season. Coincidentally, both when they were live on Sky Sports. Sorry about that. Rangers were beaten 2-1 at Hearts on the opening weekend. Celtic somehow contrived to lose that amazing match at Aberdeen 3-2. Victory for Rangers would take them four points clear at the top of the table. A win for Celtic, though, and they will leapfrog from fourth to first. But they haven't won here at Ibrox for four years. That one is aimed towards Henrik Larsson, but Colin Henry will hope that it carries behind, and it just about does. It's been a pretty frustrating time for Colin Henry so far at Rangers, isn't it, John? Yeah, it certainly has, but I'm sure Colin will settle into the no problem. This is a fixture that he's looked forward to. And even the nerves have got to me, and I did, of course, see that uh, coming to Parkhead and Mark Ibrox. Free kick has gone the way of Celtic. Amadon Mato's foul. Dick Advocat, the first foreign coach of Rangers, he's been busy watching all five of last season's old firm clashes on video. And although Rangers won three of those five games, he actually reckoned that Celtic played the better football. They have a chance to play some football here. Stubbs his free kick. Amoruso, the Rangers captain. David Hanna wasn't quite sure where he was going. Stubbs. Craig Moore, right back is uh, most certainly not his favourite position, but he's been asked to tuck in there today. And it's Craig Moore who will take this throw. Moore again. He's been at Rangers for five years now, the Australian, but he's still only 22. Kanchelskis, who had such a good record in the Manchester and Merseyside derbies. Four successful years at Old Trafford, not such a good time at Everton. Although he did win the cup. Ooh, that uh, just tickled off Larson's boot. Perini. And a foul, surely, by Boyd on Van Bronckhorst. <laughs> And it's going to be a Rangers free kick. Didn't take long for a tackle like that. Well, we do, it's going to be hectic stuff. And Tom Boyd, really, it, it, obviously, it's not as bad as it first looked there. He's been given the yellow card. Um, but Brock does perhaps making the most of it. But it's hectic stuff. Just as you imagine, Ian, because this is a fixture that splits even all the other dressing rooms up in Scotland, down the country here. They've all got Rangers or Celtic tendencies. 
Tom Boyd gets a yellow card. There were 28 of those in the Holfer meetings last season. And one red card for Stefan Meyer. And Bronkhorst gets up to take the free kick. Away by Meyer. Amato, who's played in some of the big Argentinian derby games, and he reckoned this would be something akin to that. He didn't manage to keep that in play, though. The big striker who was signed for £4.2 million from Mallorca in the summer. Yeah, he's a bit unlucky there, shows good strength to get past Valdon. May have been a free kick, but the referee quite content to give a bike kick to Celtic. Tom Boyd, one of the many Celtic players who were struggling to make it in the week leading up to the game. Barry Ferguson's header. It's his first Old Firm derby. He thought he was in with a chance of playing in the New Year one. Didn't make it then, but he has done now, and he's really having quite a season so far, isn't he? Yeah, he's a tremendous talent, Ian. He's, uh, without doubt, been Rangers' top performer this season. Craig Burley, who, like Boyd, was also struggling in the week. In fact, he was considered one of the most doubtful. Recently passed 300 games for Celtic Boyd. Rob Wallace just starting his Rangers career. It's the man they call the hammer. Alberts with a throw. Here is the German again. Huge favourite with the fans. Moore, Barry Ferguson. Moore again. That was a poor ball, though. Now Henrik Larsson with a chance to run at Rangers. And he's been floored, and that's going to be the second yellow card for the Zolfan derby, is it? Or is uh, Stuart Dougal going to hold back on Van Bronckhorst? Yeah, I think he's going to join Tom Boyd in the book here, there's no doubt about that. A tackle from behind. And referee Stuart Dougal is laying down the law early. He knows he can't let this fixer get out of hand. Two yellow cards already, then. <laughs> One each. Typical stars, he thinks, to an old firm derby. Yeah, it certainly is, Ian. I just hope that we get the same amount of goals as we do cards and uh, we could be in for a bit of a treat. <laughs> it's Birdie with Celtic's free kick. Reaper had come up, but it was always going to drop over his head and away. The great Dane, who went to the World Cup. The man in charge of Celtic, Dr Joe Venglos was appointed on July the 17th, ending the club's long search for a manager. He's enjoyed great success, more so at, at international level than club level. Amato won't keep that in play. He missed the midweek European Cup match in Jerusalem with a knock. Quite a good week in Europe, actually, for the Scots, with the Rangers drawing 1-1 in that game, and Celtic winning 2-1 against Victoria Guimarães of Portugal. Although the Celts had a bit of trouble getting home, they were delayed for several hours because their plane, incredibly, had a flat battery. Somebody had left the lights on, would you believe? And they couldn't find the jump leads, obviously. Tom Boyd. Darren Jackson. Back to Boyd. Burley. It'll be a Rangers throw to be taken by this man, Sergio Perini, vastly experienced defender, played with AC Milan and Juventus in Italy, and he can't get much better than that. Donnelly nipped in, hits Larson, and he stepped past Amoruso, and past Ferguson, Burley. Boyd took a deflection. Off of Van Bronckhorst, Boyd did well to win the header. And Van Bronckhorst now finds Albert. Kamczelskis wants it on the right, but Albert goes to the left, and Amato. He just about manages to get there. Tries to nutmeg Reaper, but the Dane was having none of that. Amoruso to Hendry. Harry Ferguson. 
Moore. Alan Stubbs. Donnelly. Boyd. Stefan Meyer back to Burley. Top scorer for Celtic this season, Craig Burley, so far with five goals, including a splendid hat trick on the opening day of the season. The Celtic are hanging on to it at the moment. Here's Reaper. Larson. No foul by Perini, says. Referee Dougal and Van Bronckhorst is tipped, is he? No. Stuart Dougal felt that the Dutchman was making the most of that and he was very perfectly positioned to see as much. Here's Boyd on a rampaging run. Fends off Perini and finds Larson. Larson! Just dragged it wide. Celtic have made a really promising start. Well, that's not a bad effort at all there from Henrik Larson. A great run from Tom Boyd, shows great strength as well, and rolls it inside. And you see Henrik here, he's not got much to shoot at, and he whistles one there right across the face of goals, and just past Chabonnet's post. Celtic's last win here came in August 1994. Henrik Larsson would love to break his duck against Rangers and lead them to a victory here. Well, this could be trouble here for Celtic. George Alberts has that fearsome left foot of his. He's already showed us in the past, in this fixture, what he can do from this distance. Yes, he'll be sizing this one up. Scored a cracker in the UEFA Cup in midweek. Is he going to do it again? He keeps on doing it, to be fair to him. Five men in the Celtic wall. He really wouldn't want to be in that wall when Alberts runs up like this. It's straight through and bounces away off Gould. It was a real awkward one. But Burley can try and steam up the other end. Meyer stepping into the Rangers half now. Stubbs. Donnelly's header down for O'Donnell. Here's Donnelly. Larson takes up the course. He really looks up for this one, Henrik Larson. Barry Ferguson. Moore. Rod Wallace. That's a lovely turn from Wallace. He's had a storming start to his career in Scotland. Still he goes, Wallace, Amato in there, but Gould will get there first. Yes, yeah, a tremendous run from Wallace there. Stumped as well, gets the block in, Amato comes in late, but Jonathan Gould out there quickly to cover that up. It's the... 249th league encounter between these teams stretching back ooh, a mere 107 years and Rangers are on 99 wins at the moment, they're after a century Celtic have won 75 high proportion of draws, 74 well it's been a really lively start at the end with that tremendous effort from Alberts which is beat out by Jonathan Gold as well and Rangers are on the ascendancy at the moment Here's Van Bronckhorst. Now, Amoruso has got to be careful here. It's a real awkward hanging ball, but he dealt with it well, the Italian, and he needed to with Henrik Larsson working. Albert. Just calming it down a bit. And here's Hendrik. Perini. He was looking for Amato, who just caught his man Reaper then. And Reaper really felt that. He's uh, been in the walls a bit since returning from the World Cup. Yeah, Gabriel Amato probably a little bit lucky to escape without a yellow card there. It was late, caught from behind. 
referee Stuart Dougal obviously thinks he's taken enough control of the game so far with his, his two yellow cards. A win for Celtic would be just what the good doctor ordered today. Dr. Venglos, that is, of course. Here's Jackson. And Hendry sends it into the stands, and they were carved open a little bit then, Rangers. Yeah, well, Ian, both teams have uh, set the stalls one up, one off. It's a tremendous run from Jackson there. Very quick player gets in. It's a great ball in the middle. And Henrik Larson didn't gamble on Colin Hendry. Knocks it away for a corner. Great start to the match, but then you kind of expect that when these two meet. Larson picked in the corner and turning superbly. And Mayo is the man who, uh, rather stubs it was, he rose on the far post. It's a tremendous bit of skill there from Henrik Larson, turning on the byline, a good ball. But I think they've got to be looking for Alan Stubbs to knock that back across the face of the goal because it doesn't look as if he's going to score from there. Away by Maya. It's going to come back towards the Celtic defence, though. Stubbs there again. Barry Ferguson, neat play. Sort of play we've come to expect from him, though. And here go Rangers with Perini. A hanging cross for Amato! Goal kick. Well, that's tremendous defending again there from Alan Stubbs. Rangers moving down the left. It's a great ball in there from Perini. And Mato looks favourite there. But Alan Stubbs does enough to make the Rangers hit man, knock it over the bar. He had a difficult first season when he arrived from Bolton. Outstanding last season, though. Chelskis signed for a Scottish club record, £5.5 million pounds from Fiorentina. Now Jackson is up there. Oh, it won't quite drop through to Larson. Sped through, in fact, to Lionel Charbonnier. Well, that's the second time. A couple of minutes Rangers have been caught with a long ball. A great touch from Jackson. And Charbonnier out to the rescue. Russo's header and Wallace is going to latch onto this. Kanchelski is ahead of him to his right. Here he is. Just where you'd expect him to be. Kanchelski. And here's Alberts. Oh, it's just wide from George Alberts. That was mightily close. Yeah, it was great play from Rangers. A great counter attack here for Rod Wallace. Gives it to Kanchelski. It's a great little run across the Celtic defence here. And he rolls it to the hammer, but this time it's just wide of the mark, and that was very close indeed. Well, he's the top scorer for Rangers this season, and joint top scorer in Scottish football, in fact, with eight goals. Well, he's got a tremendous record in this fixture as well. It's always Alberts that seems to pop up and get the vital goal, and he was only inches away there. Nil-nil, but only just. Perini. Away by Reaper. Here's Larson. Just shrugged out of the way by Albert Kanchelskis. Barry Ferguson finds his captain, Lorenzo Amoruso. Van Bronckhorst. Albert sees his route for a cross blocked by Burley. Well, of all the things at Ibrox, Ian, the biggest difference I can see is how tight the pitch is. I know Dick Advocat likes to play his wide men and get the ball there, but the, the pitch is very, very tight indeed. They must have brought it in a good six or seven yards. Which is rather strange when the, the likes of Kanchelskis are around. Correct. Here's Moore. Hendry. And the foul by Wallace. A free kick. 
Just Cliff O'Donnell. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward challenge there. I think the fans in the red, white and blue didn't quite see it the same way as the referee, but uh, I suppose that's to be expected. Rangers edging the early possession. But as ever, it is such an intriguing contest. Jackson's header, didn't really look where he was knocking that. Away by Amoruso, who made his Rangers debut in the Scottish Cup semi-final against Celtic. Having missed most of the season through injury. Larson, Hannah steams in, and here goes Larson. Support from Burley. Burley looking to pick out Jackson, and he didn't because Colin Hendry ensured he didn't. Kanchelskis turning away from Meyer. And Kanchelskis' progress is halted by Burley. I'm not quite sure if the referee should go gets the right man there. Burnley slides in, Mai slides in, and really it could have been any one of the two of them. A great play from Kanchelskis. We've not seen enough of this from him since he's moving this summer, but maybe now he's getting to full fitness. Barry Ferguson. Albert. That's a lovely ball from Barry Ferguson to Perini, and it was cut out by Reaper. Well, this little movement shows you what Barry Ferguson's all about. He's been doing this all season. A little interchange with Alberts, a magnificent ball to Perini. He really has some talent, this young lad. Here's Van Bronckhorst. It's not bad either. Kanchelskis is header, and Ron Wallace could not quite make the sort of contact he would have wished. And offside as Amoruso's header came back over the top of everyone. Your side flag went up. But well, I think a... it's more than a half chance here, Ian. It's a great ball from Van Bronckhurst. Kanchelskis knocks it back, and, well, I'm sure if Perini had shouted, he probably had a better chance than Wallace there. It was a real good chance. Alan Stubbs floated up towards Jackson, and it's going to come back here to Henrik Larsson! Plenty of power. But it wasn't a bad strike, but you've got to give Colin Hendry massive credit here. I'm sure Henrik Larson was sizing that one up. It's a great ball, it's a good touch again from Jackson. But watch how quickly Colin Hendry gets out here to put pressure on Larson and makes some wacky shot well over the bar in the end. Yes, when you see Hendry coming towards you, you know you've got trouble already, don't you? It's all square on attempts at goal. Hendry now to Amoruso. Perini moved to Scotland after winning the Italian title with Juventus. Amato. Reaper keeping him company. Amato trying to fend him off. That's a poor ball, though. It's cut out by Phil O'Donnell. Hendry, superb again. Couldn't quite force it back, though, to Kanchelskis. Celtic take a breather, and here's Tom Boyd. Celtic have made a £1.5 million move for the Norwegian international midfielder Vidar Orisev over this weekend. He would uh, become their first signing for nine months, incredibly. They've also been linked with plenty of other people as well, including Stefan Givash and Martin Darley and Philippe Albert. In fact, you might be quicker to mention who hasn't been linked with Celtic this season. That's true, and they have been linked with uh, numerous players. And it's signed incredible for a team of Celtic size not to have signed anyone for nine months. But the team won the league last year, they've made not a bad start this year, and who knows? Myers throw. Hendry in the way, and there's plenty of him to get in the way. Rangers finally got their man after a pretty drawn-out transfer saga. Larson's flick on, away by Moore. Heads, it drops for Boyd. 
Hannah. Burley opens up in front of him. Craig Burley has got plenty of goals from that sort of distance, and that one was deflected for a corner. Well, some neat passing from Celtic again, and Hendry again launching himself in there. I think the ball comes off Lorenzo Amoruso. It's another corner for Celtic, and the big men will be up again. Burley really packs a punch with his shot. It's Donnelly to take the corner. It's the likes of Stubbs who will be looking for here. And it was Stubbs who made contact. Larson knocked it down, and Burley! No wonder the hands go on the head. Well, this is the best chance of the match so far. A little bit of head tennis in the Rangers box there, and it dropped to Burley. See the long ball in. It's knocked up near, knocked down. And really, Burley must be looking to get that on target. And again, it whistles past. Sherboni is right hand post. But I'm sure Craig Burley will feel he should have scored there. Joe Venglos. <laughs> Everyone in football will know how he feels. Well, I know there's certainly one or two boys in Livingston dressing room would have the same there. <laughs> Mr Bingham and Conway, no doubt. <laughs> it's a fixture that Scotland stands still for. And you can be sure there'll be Scots all across the world in little pockets of the planet here and there watching this one. Jackson. No foul, says uh, Stuart Douglas. I don't think Stuart Douglas Marusa. has done well so far, Ian, because there's been one or two little incidents where players have uh, tried to corner him into a foul, and he's, he's not having it right now. It's good playing a very, very difficult fixture to referee. He might have become a player, actually. He had a trial with Coventry City, but picked up a bad injury before he was able to go for it. Alberts was looking for Van Bronckhorst, and Van Bronckhorst finds Amato! And he just never got control of it, did he? Enabling him to have a pot of goal. And here goes Celtic and Jackson here, but Hendry comes across and rescues Rangers. And nothing's getting past him at the moment. Well, it's a magnificent passage of play, that. Real end-to-end -end stuff. Amato, a magnificent chance. His first touch let him down, he tried to find Kinchelskis in the end. And then again, magnificent defending from Colin Hendry at the other end. Here's Wallace, and that's a decent cross for Amato! Oh, and he really, really should have hit the target with that one. Well, that's twice in a minute that Gabriel Amato could have stamped his name all over this derby. It's a superb ball from Wallace. He's up there, and really, he has to score that. What a major let-off for Celtic. Superb ball. He's up there hanging. That is a quite incredible miss. Dick Avocat is thinking the same. Well, I'm sure Mr Avocat's transplant could have been in a little bit of bother there if there's any more misses like that. <laughs> Celtic now with a quick throw. Donnelly chasing. Amoruso is there, though. Poor clearance straight to Phil O'Donnell. Simon Donnelly. It's going to go to Burley. Perini now for Rangers. To Rod Wallace. And Marto, who missed that golden opportunity. He's got a free kick now, though. Yeah, it really was an unbelievable chance. Here's the first one. It's played in. If his first touch takes it in front of him, he has a chance to score, but Celtic crowd him out. But the second one, really, it should have been nestling in the back of the net. Amato flicked it on, and Wallace trying to get in, but Reaper is there. Can see the corner, though. Well, it's pretty much end-to-end. -end. Yeah, it's a fantastic match. So often in the past, the, the great occasions, the match doesn't live up to it. But so far, with 27 minutes on the clock, they've got everything you'd want from the game, except a goal. Van Bronckhorst has killed that out, even though it came back in. And although the ball... He's banged into the back of the net. No chance of that counting. Yep, he's trying to arrow that one out there. Didn't look as if it had gone out of play. And Danny Wallace does what all good strikers do. Knocks it in anyway. 
And Broncos, former fine old man. In fact, he played with Celtic's Henrik Larsson there. And Van Broncos cheered Celtic on to victory against Rangers in the New Year match. A guest of his mate Larsson. Well, I'm sure he won't be cheering the one today. Here's Albert. Hendry. Across for Van Bronckhorst. Albert. And he can't get it right all the time. Well, we all know how deadly his left foot is, but uh, I don't think George will want to see this one again. It falls awkwardly here as a swing with his right foot. And that is high, wide, and most definitely not handsome. Being left on the bench for the last couple of games, Albert, and uh, around with his coach. Stubbs. Stefan Meyer. And he was almost caught out by Kanchelskis, who's going to chase this one. Jonathan Gould decided that sending it out would be the best idea. Amato. Moore. Wallace. Albert's waited for it to come and it didn't as Darren Jackson nipped in. Here's Larson. Full of tricks. Burley. And Boyd. Burley still nearby in support. Slightly overhit that one. Much to the delight of the Rangers fans. Yeah, that's one thing with this fixture. Anything at all to give the opposition stick. They're on it right away. Russo can take the goal kick. Well, he bounced all the way through to Kanchelskis. Now Wallace. Kanchelskis again. And still. And it is eventually collected by Jonathan Gould. That's a good stop from Gould. He's had a tremendous season last year. Again, Kanchelskis cuts in a little deflection there. But Jonathan Gould has definitely got one of the safest pair of hands in Scottish soccer. Fairly inauspicious career in English football with Halifax, West Brom, Coventry and Bradford, but he's done superbly for Celtic. Amoruso. Albert. Perini. Hendry, such a superb servant to Blackburn Rovers over the years. What a season with Manchester City as well. Began his career with Dundee. Here he is. The only Rangers player to start Scotland's recent European Championship qualifier in Lithuania. Amato. Barry Ferguson, who came on as a sub in that game. His first cap, but could be one or two more to come. Albert, lovely back heel into the path of Van Bronckhorst, who goes wide and Gould collects at his near post. And has a little tussle with Wallace as well. Yeah, I can't see Wallace winning that one, but that was a magnificent better play there from Rangers. A great ball in. Albert's a superb back heel there. It looked as if Van Bronckhorst might have got a penalty there if he'd gone down. But he stayed up, all credit to him. And go to the cross very well indeed. The Dutchman, who was part of Holland's World Cup squad, but uh, couldn't get a game. Mind you, the Holland midfield ain't bad, is it? Aaron Jackson getting a little warning. One of many warnings being dished out in this game. And Dick Advocat, who once managed the Dutch national side, shouting out the instructions. Not that I don't think these players are going to hear him somehow. Here's Perini. Van Bronckhorst. 
And he's chipped it to the far post, but it was always going to drift out. Yeah, he's a little bit unlucky there, Van Bronckhorst. It's a good little turn. But the ball was never, ever going to cause Celtic's rear guard any problems. Well, tomorrow night on Sky Sports, the FA Carling Premiership action comes from Ewood Park. Should be an interesting battle between Blackburn and Chelsea Monday, 7 o'clock, Sky Sports 1. And next Sunday, our Scottish match is from Pitodri. Aberdeen against Kilmarnock, Sky Sports 3, 6 o'clock next Sunday. This Sunday, it's Rangers and Celtic, and it's Kanchelskis. Phil O'Donnell says, what have I done? Albert <laughs> tries one of his specials, and they normally are special. Yeah, we don't need to give him any second chance at all here. It's not a bad strike, but yet again, Jonathan Gould will watch him fly past all day. I can't imagine too many people volunteering to go in a wall when he takes a free kick. Really. No, I've uh, had the dubious honour in the past of being the man elected to charge it down, and it's uh, not the greatest job description in the world. <laughs> Here's Van Bronckhorst. Amato. Kanchelskis. Still Kanchelskis. And well done, Phil O'Donnell. Although Kanchelskis nipped in again. Free kick, though. It's going to go Rangers' way. Kanchelskis has fouled. Yeah, it was good defending there from Phil O'Donnell, but Kanchelskis got back with Alberts. Free kick in what could be a very, very dangerous position here with Van Brockhurst whipping it in. Up comes Amaruso. And the way Colin Henry's been playing today, who would bet against him? Maybe flashing one in here. Here it comes from Van Bronckhorst. It didn't get as far as Henry. It was cleared by Burley. Celtic's thrown out. Dr. Joe had an unsuccessful time in England with Aston Villa. But he has coached five national sides. Stubbs to Boyd. Hannah. Donnelly. David Hanna actually made his Celtic debut in an old firm match. Here's Stubbs. Donnelly lost out to Amoruso, but it's going to come to Hanna. Amoruso goes back in for a bit more and concedes a free kick. Taken quickly, but guess who was keeping a check on it? Colin Hendry, and he was uh, floored by Larson, who doesn't seem overly impressed with the giant Scott. No, well, Colin Henry using his experience here. Just get a touch, there's a little nudge there. And Colin going down knowing the referee Stuart Dougal would give him the free kick. Colin Henry making only his third start for Rangers. Left on the bench because of the excellent form of Craig Moore. Who switched to right back today. This man's at left back with Arthur Newman out injured, Perini. Albert and Barry Ferguson with a rocket shot which cannoned off Stubbs and now here's Simon Donnelly Darren Jackson Burley's making an excellent run forward Larson is over the far side and that's who he's looking for Larson! Oh, it's up the bar pushed onto it by Charbonnier what a save from the man who was third choice keeper for the World Cup winners front well, that was a magnificent save. What a ball from Darren Jackson. Larson's header looks net, but what a save from Charbonnier. He doesn't like comparisons with Andy Gorham. But I tell you what, Andy Gorham's brought off many saves his career, especially all from games. He'll done well to have bettered that one. Charbonnier trying to punch that one clear as well. A super save that was as Burley concedes a free kick for a foul on Barry Ferguson, and he's going to get a yellow card. He, he'd had a couple of warnings, to be fair. Yeah, that's true, but what a save. I'm sure Andy Gorham now at Sheffield would be full of admiration for that. Now Van Bronckhorst put away by Albert. 
He just kept it in play. It was sent out of play by David Hammer. Corner. Well, Charbonnier, what a hero for Rangers here. It's a magnificent save. What a header. And it's just fingertips on the underside of the bar. And Colin Hendry got it away. He has kept five clean sheets in eight games. Charbonnier. Meantime, back up the other end. It's a corner for Albert. Hendry and Amoruso, not surprisingly, make their way in to see what they can do from Albert. It's corner! Nippo's header was from Amato. Perini sizing one up, deflected away from another corner. Well, this is Gabriel Matos, hardest chance of the lot. Again, the ball whipped in from Alberts. It was a good header and a great reaction save from Jonathan Gold. And Maruso and Hendry, joined by Craig Moore. In it comes again from Alberts, but dealt with that time by Mark Reaper. Perini switching it back to Alberts. So Perini short on that one, and this could lead to a Celtic charge with Henrik Larsson. Credit to Perini, who just tickled it off his toes. Rob Wallace. Van Bronckhorst. Not the best of first touches. It allowed Reaper in. Albert, there's a man on, and it's Simon Donnelly. Inside the final five minutes of an enthralling first half. Offside against uh, Phil O'Donnell. Well, it really has been a, a cracking match so far. It's a good run for O'Donnell. Don't think he's offside. In fact, when that ball's played, Colin Henry appeared to be playing one side there. Perini up for Amato. Barry Ferguson. And no free. Uh, I don't think he was going to get the free kick then, but he has done. Jackson tripping Ferguson. Yeah, I think he just clips his heels there. Referee Stuart Dougal certainly got that one right. And once again, Mr. Alberts. Lines up, and he did score from a very, very similar position in a New Year derby. Well, they're the unlucky men. They've got to be in the wall. Amoruso, he also likes to take these uh, free kicks, and it's he who's going to have a pop at this one. He doesn't tend to have uh, as much success as Alberts. Well, uh, I'm led to believe that uh, Mr Alberts and Amoruso fell out on more than one occasion on who's hit the free kicks. Well, after that effort, we might be back to Alberts next time, I think. I really wouldn't like to argue any of the two, don't we? be perfect, just for you. Good kick going Burley's way. Celtic's uh, win in the New Year game this year was their only one in 12 league encounters with Rangers. Larson's little flick for Boyd. And Blomkhorst did enough. Boyd with a throw. A reaper. Away by Moore. Chelsky's now. Van Bronckhorst. Barry Ferguson. Hendry. Amoruso. Find his fellow Italian Perini. Here's a Dutchman, and an Argentinian, and a German. 
And an Englishman, Rob Wallace. And Wallace away from subs, but blocked by Reaper. Corner. Well, Wallace had a great chance to put that in, he just delayed it a little bit there. Allowed Reaper to get back, but he does ever so well here. Pulls off Stubbs, this is where he could have put it in now, he just delays it. And Reaper knocks it out. Dick Advocat is watching Van Bronckel take this corner. Hendry was up there. It's going to come to Kanchelskis, but it's high and not very handsome. A little flick here from Colin Hendry, it's a great touch. I'm sure Dick Advocat would like Craig Moore to be attacking that area, but it just sets up here for Kanchelskis. And although the technique's good, he just can't keep it down. Well, plenty of attempts at goal in this game. And Rangers steaming ahead with those attempts. But it's level as far as the on-target efforts are concerned. Here's Larson. Happy to see it run out for the throw. Which I'm sure he won't take. Boyd will. Stuart Dougal telling him to get a bit of a move on. Probably back heel by Larson. Boyd's cross. O'Donnell's jump not timed to perfection at all, and it'll be a Rangers throw. O'Donnell making the 200th appearance of his career today. A milestone for him. Barry Ferguson's back pass, screwed away by Amarusa. Here's Meyer, though. The cheer from the Rangers fans. I'll tell you that Celtic. Made an unforced error in letting that one dribble out. Amoruso. That's a shocking ball. It was cut out by O'Donnell. Here's Jackson. Spins away from Barry Ferguson. Looking for Larson. Oh, and Perini's mistake has let Larson in. He's going to go for glory. And he doesn't find it. It's a fantastic little turn there, it's a good ball from Jackson, Perini a bit unlucky, but Henrik Larsson gets in here, drives forward, I thought he was going to slip it outside there. Lionel Chabonnet will not be too unhappy to see that one flash over the bar. Chances are coming for Henrik Larsson though. It's half-time in the first Old Firm derby of the season. And Lionel Charbonnier, Rangers' French keeper, made a stunning save. But at the other end, Gabriel Amato really should have scored with a free header. Craig Burley also had opportunities in this game. The chances really have flowed. This was Burley's drive, which just sneaked wide. Gabriel Amato might be thinking about this one as he tries to get to sleep tonight. Lovely cross, free header, somehow. He steered it wide. But the best moment of the half, created by Celtic, Darren Jackson's cross, Larson's header, fantastic save by Charbonnier, tipped onto the bar. And the only real surprise is at Ibrox, in this famous showdown between these two Glasgow Giants, is that it's half-time, it's Rangers nil, Celtic nil. Coming in this second half. Here's Burley. Stefan Meyer, who was sent off in one of the Hawthorne games here last season. That was the only red card in five clashes, the four league games and the Scottish Cup semi-final. Perini. Albert's giving Wallace something to chase, and you can be sure he will chase it. Away by Stubbs. Wallace still there, though. And his efforts applauded by the Ibrox faithful. Barry Ferguson. Rangers, champions of Scotland 47 times. Dick Affecat has a tough act to follow in Walter Smith. But you can be sure that he will try his best. He's a disciplinarian, but he's also 
highly professional in his approach to coaching. Amato unable to get much joy from that exchange. Here's Reaper. Amoruso covering. Here's Reaper. Signed a year ago from West Ham. Larson, and it might still come into Donnelly's path. It soon, though, came into Hendry's path. A familiar sight in this game. Free kick for the trip on Alan Stubbs by Amato. Meyer to swing this one in. He sends it up towards where the Celtic fans are, but it doesn't stay there for long. Away by Albert. And Broncos now putting Wallace on the chase again. And Reaper knew that the speedy former Leeds man was there and went for the safe route into touch. Here's Kanchelskis, deflected on its way across. Still dealt with, though, by Boyd that time. Free kick. Well, I hope the second half was as much excitement as the noise level was coming for the fans. Incredible, what an atmosphere. And let's hope we can get the second half to march it first with a couple of goals to boot. Ibrox is rocking, it's Van Bronckhorst with this free kick. Gould's punch clear, referee Dougal spotted an infringement. And it was Maruso who went down. Well, just a bit too close to the goalie, Gould's brave, he comes over bodies. It's a good punch. Larson was chasing it, but it was comfortably knocked away by Amoruso. Farini. Stubbs stepped in ahead of Amato. Burley. Tom Boyd. It's through the middle, but it's eaten up by Amoruso. Sergio Perini. Wallace, no free kick. This is Darren Jackson. Burley, there's uh, nobody over this left-hand side with him as yet. Donnelly. Now, can Boyd deliver the goods? It's away by Amoruso Van Bronckhorst. And Albert won't get to that. Although he's charged down Reaper's clearance. Here goes Albert. Steaming towards goal, George Albert. He sets up Rod Wallace. Oh, and Wallace was crowded out. What a charge that was. What an opportunity that was. But it wasn't taken. Well, it's another glorious chance. Alberts charges it down and keeps going. I think he fancied this himself. He gets in the box, tees up Wallace. It's a good first touch, and that's a great tackle. I can't believe the referee has given a bike kick for that. But tremendous credit to the Celtic players for getting back. There it was. It's a tackle there, I'm sure, from Alan Stubbs. And Alberts, another great chance. Bonnier to Moore. Only two Scots in the Rangers starting lineup. Here's one of them. And Maruso 
whose Rangers career was delayed somewhat when he was injured. An arrival from Italy. Didn't make his appearance until the Scottish Cup semi with Celtic in April. Free kick for a trip on Craig Moore. Yeah, Phil Donald just clips him in no more there. Just stands on his ankle. But it really is a cracking match. The atmosphere's superb. How many more chances are we going to miss? Well, here's Amato. Unable to turn past David Hanna. Albert! Didn't get uh, the normal amount of power on that one. Celtic started the season with four clean sheets in a row, but they haven't kept any for six matches. Jean Bonnier taking over the number one jersey. Stubbs pumped up towards Larson who had two men on him, the two Italians and Perini. And Amoruso between them, inspired to clear. Kanchelskis. Always an awesome sight when he's in this sort of mood, Kanchelskis. Dreadful pass, though, straight at Burley. Almost like Burley had a blue shirt on then. Not much chance of that happening. Here's Van Bronckhorst. And he's trying to get it back, but the free kick has gone Celtic's way. And Broncos left down after tangling with Burley, who has the free kick. Yeah, a bit of tuggy going there, the referee's right, but I don't see much in that. He may have accidentally got a hand in the face from Craig Burley, but there's no doubt. It's certainly a Celtic foul. Boyd. Meyer. Phil O'Donnell. Starting his first league match of the season. Here's Meyer. Hendry. Just about managed to clear that. And Chelskis. And here's Van Bronckhorst in space. Van Bronckhorst with a perfect pass for Wallace. Oh, and he was unable to bring it under control, and he just couldn't keep it in play. Well, it's two superb crossfield passes in a matter of seconds, and Wallace very, very unlucky there, his touch just eludes him. But once again, end-to-end -end football here really is a superb match. Rod Wallace has had quite a start in Scotland after his move on a free transfer from Leeds United. He was on the bench when Leeds came here in the Battle of Britain Euro Clash in 92. Only got on for a few minutes, but it's now his football home. Moore's throw. O'Donnell, oops, sliced that out of play. Former Motherwell man, Phil O'Donnell. Started in Portugal in midweek. Amoruso. Perini. Alves was making a run through the middle. That was his intended target, but Boyd got in the way. Perini does find Alves now, though. Hendry. Here's Moore. He's got Kanchelskis outside of him. And it's uh, whipped in by Kanchelskis and headed behind by David Hanna. Well, that's good covering work from David Hanna there because there's no doubt Rangers worked the position well. It's not the greatest cross from Kanchelskis, but it's good cover play from the Celtic midfield man. Marusso amongst those waiting for this corner. Before it's taken, though, a separation going on. This player's tangled. 
in comes that corner. Reefer's clearance is going to come back though to the man who took the corner kick, Van Bronckhorst. Kanchelskis. Amoruso seeing it up for Albert. And it deflected across. Amoruso sent it back in. It hit his own man, Amato. Celtic try and bring it away. And it's Phil O'Donnell who's got past Amoruso. But then hit it straight at Farina. Albert. To Wallace. What an open game this is. Wallace's cross. Amato was at full stretch. And Chelskis can try again for Rangers. Barry Ferguson. Van Bronckhorst! Oh, a real stinging, thumping drive from the Dutchman. Stung the palms of Gould. Well, it's another great effort at goal. Rangers worked the position well. And that's a tremendous strike from Van Bronckhorst. But Jonathan Gould was equal to it. Celtic have only scored once in their last four league visits to Ibrox. Paolo Di Canio got that one. January 97. Amato. He's yet to score in the league, Amato. He does have three goals to his name. Two in Europe, one in the League Cup. Should have opened his Scottish Premier League account in the first half, that's for sure. Here's Jackson for Celtic. Amoruso. And again. Alberts. Perini overlapping, but here's Van Bronckhorst for the time being. Now Perini. He sold a nice dummy, Sergio Perini, but then delivered a desperate cross. I think uh, that's uh, one way to describe it. Well, I think you've been Katie on there, Ian. I mean, he does magnificent here. He tricks Tom Boyd in, and just when you look for that bit of quality, Perini can't provide it. Tick Africa. The first time a Scottish manager hasn't been in charge of one of the old firm teams. This famous derby match with Dick Africa. Coaching Rangers and Dr. Joe Venglos in charge of Celtic. That's a poor ball. He might come from the same country, but they weren't quite on the same wavelength. And Russo and Perini. Larson, and that's into the stand as well. That was his Perini impression. Yeah, but Henrik's had a fine game so far. He's definitely been Celtic's best player. He's looking lively. He's getting him behind the, the Rangers' defence. He's making them work, and he certainly looks Celtic's best bet to open the scoring at the moment. That'll drop harmlessly through to Jonathan Gould, whose excellent form last season earned him a World Cup call and a new contract. Stubbs, Phil O'Donnell, away by Hendry, whose days on the Rangers bench might be over, judging by his performance today. That's a Celtic throw. You can see the action areas in the second half. Rangers piling forward whenever the opportunity arises. Looking perhaps the more likely in the second half, although Celtic have had their moments. Both teams, in fact, have had many moments. Boyd, Oripa, oh, 
Maruso steered his header down to Perini, and here goes Arbat again with a bit of space to exploit. A lovely pass as well to Wallace. Here's Wallace, and here's Amato. And Gould, has he done enough to smother it? He just about has, you know. Brave goalkeeping from Jonathan Gould in at the feet of Amato. Well, it's another fabulous chance. And our Rangers going to continue to squander. Wallace does great. He cuts it back. Amato, it was the easiest one there. Gold got in front of him and smothered it. But could Rangers rue missing all these chances before the end of the match? Because when you're playing in a match like this, you just can't afford to keep missing them. Rangers taking a hold of this old firm derby with Albert. Still no goals, though. Everybody's getting stuck in. But then you have to. Nothing else will be allowed in a game like this. Fouled by Wallace on Hannah who probably had the ball kicked at him, but it was all calmed down very quickly. Yes, yeah, a little trip there. It's, to be fair to Amato, it's probably the first time he's hit his intended target today. <laughs> I think the Rangers fans are beginning to get on his back. Albert's here go Rangers again. Oh, it's given away, though. Straight at 30, that went. And now Larson. Impeded by Amoruso, free kick Celtic. I think he's going to escape a card though. It's a great bit of trickery here for Larson. Beautiful little nutmeg. It's been a fantastic contest that all afternoon. Amoruso's played well. Larson's given him all sorts of problems. And a chance for Celtic to set up another attack. Stubbs is up, looking to get on the end of. This free kick from Donnelly, he doesn't quite, it was just taken away from him by Perini, but it will be a Celtic throw. <laughs> to be taken by Phil O'Donnell. Jackson. And Moore with the challenge. Really has had an excellent season so far, Craig Moore. Hasn't exactly ever been a favourite of the Rangers fans, but he's done well. Farini. Amato won't get to that. The Reaper will. Farini cancelled by Burley. Rangers looked wantonly for the free kick, but it's not given. It's a Celtic throw. Celtic involved in disappointing draws with Dundee and Kilmarnock before their morale-boosting UEFA Cup win in Portugal. Rangers unbeaten since their opening day defeat at Hearts. Amoruso, Albert, now Wallace, Rangers on the attack again, Wallace is crossed for Kanchelskis, who was pulling back the trigger for a while, but credit to O'Donnell who got in the way. It's good play from Albert and Wallace again, They're exposing Celtic down the left, it's a deeper cross, Kanchelskis catches hold of this, but it's deflected wide. Giovanni van Bronckhorst with this Rangers corner. And it was put it down by Moore on the far stick. Yeah, Craig Moore's got a lot of vital goals sneaking in the back. He does so again, he gets up well. He just can't quite get it on target. It's another half chance. Seventeen attempts of goal for Rangers, five of them on target, Celtic lagging a long way behind. Larson. 
Barry Ferguson steps in. Now Perini. Rangers ready to put Celtic on the rack again. Craig Moore. They might end up picking themselves Rangers if this first old firm clash of the season ends in a draw. A result that Celtic would certainly much prefer than Rangers. Albert, Amato, Barry Ferguson, Craig Moore. Rangers very much in rhythm at the moment. Moore's cross for Amato. Reaper though. It comes to Albert! Hugh, another thumping drive. Uh, George Alberts hovering. Ball's flicked in. Amato, good challenge here. As I said already, this man will hit them from anywhere. Didn't quite get a hold of that. And it's yet another effort on goal by Rangers. Well, he got 15 goals last season, 13 the season before. He's already on eight this campaign, so it looks like he's going to have his uh, best season for Rangers. Myers throw. Rangers are going to bring on Charlie Miller soon. Hendry, oh, and Maruso's mistake, lets in Henry Glasson! And he's unable to score against Rangers for the first time. Well, once again, Larson causing them problems, that little diagonal run, Hendry knocks it down. Amoruso in trouble there, and Larson hits it really well. And it just whistles over the bar. A rare chance for Celtic in this uh, second half. Larson didn't take it. That was a reaction from Joe Venglos. Charlie Miller comes on for Rangers in place of Gabriel Amato. Yet another substitute appearance for Miller, his sixth of the season. He's got a couple of goals already this campaign. Stubbs, Meyer. Gould made the number one jersey his own at Celtic last season. Donnelly now. Surely fouled uh, Donnelly. No, no foul, says the uh, referee. Looked like he might have been caught here, but we'll take a look at the evidence. Yeah, he did get caught there. A definite free kick. I can't quite believe how referee Stuart Dougal, who's had a fantastic match, it has to be said. Didn't quite see that one, but it's not vital to the game. Hasn't cost a goal, but it's a good touch here. <laughs> There's a bit of a thumping challenge from two of them. But the game goes on. They're obviously allowed those in Old Firm Derby, is it? Well, it's, uh, it's what we call a, a normal challenge. <laughs> Not a bit hot-blooded up here, a Scotsman. Here's Perini. Van Bronckhorst. Miller, it's his first touch. And that was nice from Van Bronckhorst, who was surely obstructed. And that will be a free kick. Boyd got his body in the way. Yeah, good touch from Van Bronkers again. It's, it's just obstruction. There's not a lot Tom Boyd could have done about that, to be fair. The Rangers come forward again. He's got a yellow card for his trouble as well, as Mr. Boyd. I think it was Simon Donnelly there, Ian. He's probably having a word with the referee about uh, what happened down the other end of the park. Yeah, good spot, because Boyd's already got a yellow, so... He wouldn't be out there defending his free kick if it had been him. Simon Donnelly with the yellow card. And Bronckhorst with the free kick. Perini at the far post. 
It's going to drift away for a throw. That's quite a good touch there from Reaper because Perini was powering in behind him. Kanchelskis. Charlie Miller. Across for Albert. Whenever there's even the remotest opportunity, he'll have a go. Well, it's a super low ball here from Charlie Miller. He spots Albert and Mark, dinks it right on his left foot. And I'll tell you what, that's another good chance for Albert. Familiar look of frustration from Mr. Avocat on the bench. As another chance goes begging for Rangers. It's still goals. Flash ahead and more. And O'Donnell will just need a bit of attending to. This is why. Yeah, it's definitely a free kick there, Mahid as well. But have just flashed heads accidentally, Phil O'Donnell. And Craig Burnham. And I assume the Rangers might not get the worst of this, yeah. I think Craig Moore could be a little bit concussed there. Well, tomorrow night on Sky Sports, the FA Carling Premiership game is Blackburn Rovers against Chelsea. Two teams with title ambitions. They haven't made the best of starts. Monday at 7. And next Sunday at 6pm on Sky Sports 3, our latest Scottish Premier League encounter is Aberdeen against Kilmarnock. Craig Moore off the pitch, as you can see, getting a little bit of treatment. Rangers, temporarily, the man down. Celtic was shunted down to fourth place yesterday when Motherwell and Kilmarnock drew with each other. They could go top if they could sneak a win here, though, but they won't do it there. Larson unable to latch on to Stubbs' overhit lob. Rangers, of course... Top of the table at the moment, point clear. Craig Moore's ready to come back on. He still looks a little bit groggy, but if he doesn't really know where he is, he soon will do when he hears all the noise here. Yeah, it's a very important game for both sides. Celtic, as you say, could go top, but even for Rangers, a chance to go five points clear this early in the season would really kick-start it for them. That's a lovely turn from Van Bronckhorst. And he went for goal himself. Yet another attempt at goal. Well, it's a magnificent goal from Van Bronckhorst. It's a tremendous turn here. He leaves Reaper for dead. Cuts across, and really it's a bit, unself a bit selfish here shooting. I thought he could have whipped this across the face of the goal. He goes for the shot. And it's just wide of goal's right hand post. Are we destined for a goalless draw? You can be sure there'll be plenty of people out there trying to ensure that we aren't. As we head towards the final 15 minutes of this spectacular showdown between the Glasgow Giants. Kanchelskis gets the throw. Quick take, finds Wallace. He had Stubbs right behind him flip forward by Perini lovely touch by Wallace to Kanchelskis and Meyer came across it Kanchelskis is hurt it's a tremendous switch there from Wallace and again not much in that I think Kanchelskis maybe twisted his ankle when he went down Meyer seemed to play the ball first he was certainly in absolute agony as he did land awkwardly then. Kanchelskis. Ouch. He really did hurt his ankle then. They might have to uh, roll him off the pitch, but it, it'll only be... Uh, That's a good run, I can only... Yep, it looks like he may have jabbed his back. It's right by the touchline. 
and I think uh, Stuart Dougal would quite like him off the pitch, thank you very much, to continue having treatment. Rangers have a free kick as a result. And it will be the sweet left foot, foot of uh, Van Bronckhorst to send it in. Barry Ferguson now. Phil O'Donnell to Simon Donnelly. Craig Moore's fully recovered from his knock. Burley. Looks like Rangers might be uh, forced into a change if Kanchelskis doesn't recover, and that change will mean the arrival of David Graham. Well, he's just a young lad, but he has exceptional pace, and he's a very, very good finisher. And I'm sure he'll come on and play straight up. Wallace will probably drop back again. This lad can score goals. He made his senior debut in the UEFA Cup against Shelbourne at the start of the season. The 19-year-old is on for the injured Kanchelskis. Injury to Kanchelskis might be a big concern. Celtic aren't worrying about it too much at the moment, that's for sure. O'Donnell gets the throw. Henry Ferguson, very much the future of Scotland, international level. Cracking career ahead of him. Myers throw. Drops now for Hendry. Hendry tripped by Burley. The quick free kick gives Alberts a chance to tear a forward again. David Graham gets his first touch. Amoruso. Craig Moore. Wallace. Moore. And free kick. Myers foul. Miller. Well, Mahi just clatters into him from behind there. A free kick and a yellow card. Maher becoming the fourth Celtic man to be booked in this game. It's Albert's time again. George Alberts, he's had a few goes this afternoon. That one was straight at Darren Juxton. Kanchelskis has departed down the dressing room as Van Bronckhorst slams one through, and that'll be deflected away for a corner. Van Bronckhorst, a £5 million pound man. Can he deliver a decent corner? It's not bad, and Miller was in there. So too, Moore, and it's bounced over. But Celtic were almost undone then from this corner. Yeah, it's a magnificent ball in against, whipped in a great area. Charlie Miller and Craig Moore both going for the same ball. I think it's Miller that heads it down and over from only four yards. How many times have we seen that expression this afternoon? <laughs> Yeah, I think Mr. Avaka is getting more and more frustrated with his team. They've dominated the second half. They've had all the chances, but they're just not taking them. And who would bet against Celtic going up the other end of the park and scoring? It's a wrist injury then for Andrei Kanchelskis. The ice packs are on straight away, of course. This is what happened here. Let's look at his wrist then. Oh. Well, it looks like it could be a dislocated or even broken wrist. Rico Anoni is uh, warming up for Celtic now. Players are dropping everywhere at the moment. With ten minutes remaining in this old firm derby. David Hanna looks like he'll be OK to carry on, though. Hurt as the 
bodies were sent sprawling from this corner. He uh, got sandwiched, didn't he? And well, I can't believe again, Charlie Moore, what a chance. I think he was a little put off there by his teammate Craig Moore's run. Another great chance for Rangers. Is it going to be their day? Here is Charlie Miller. And he's still going, Miller. He's got David Graham to his left. Miller trying to bundle his way through. He only saw a side of goal then. He does make never say what a burst of pace to get away from the Celtic midfield there. It looks as if he could have maybe slipped it either way. Good backtracking from the Celtic defence. Perini now. Van Bronckhorst. Drilled in. Away by Stubbs. It's going to be picked up by Craig Moore. Barry Ferguson. Oh, that was strangely sloppy from him. A gift for Larson. Fantastic tackle from Colin Hendry. Oh, and that was a bit late, though. And Hendry will be in trouble here. So, yellow card. <laughs> one fantastic tackle, followed by one nasty one. Well, it shows you what Colin Hendry's all about. It's a magnificent tackle on Larson. And let's just see, perhaps his enthusiasm got the better of the second one. This is a tremendous tackle here. He gets up and chases fully 30 yards. And just catches Craig Burley there. Yellow card for Colin Hendry. All the frustration of sitting on the bench for so long. Coming out in this game from him. Larson's header will be well off target. Looping horribly over. Josh McKinley's waiting to come on, but Celtic, I think, uh, initially had a change of mind. And now they are going to bring him on. Uh, first of all, they wave no. Now they're waving yes. And Josh McKinley will make an appearance for Celtic. He's only had one start this season, and he's coming on for Phil O'Donnell. Well, Phil O'Donnell's putting a workmanlike display on the left-hand side. Tosh McKinley more naturally left footed and he can whip in some dangerous crosses. But half Celtic sat in now and sell for the point. Away by Reaper. Jackson. Donnelly. Suddenly it's opening up a bit for Celtic. Burley. Slides in, stands up, looks to support out wide. Gets it from Donnelly. Perini sticking with him though. Donnelly gets past him, but not past Barry Ferguson, who almost has a disagreement with the corner flag. That'll be a goal kick. Well, that's a rare bad touch from Larson. He's had a good game. Both the, both the strikers have done well. Wallace and Larson. They've both been lively and busy. But as yet, haven't managed to get the goal. Enrico Benoni is ready to come on for Celtic. David Hanna, who was hurt and needed treatment in that incident from the corner, is the man who's coming off. I think he's hurt his shoulder when he landed on the two Rangers men and in between them and all over the place, really. And Noni is on. He's uh, a bit of a no-nonsense uh, defender, I think we could safely say. Yeah, it could be an interesting 50-50 with Anoni and Amoruso. <laughs> Inside the final five minutes. And Rangers make their pressure pay, not with a free kick like that, that's for sure. Barry Ferguson. Hendry, who's been a tower of strength. Stubbs. Jackson on his Todd at the moment. And two men on him as well. One of which is Moore, but a free kick. Now Celtic will get a chance to stick this one in the danger zone. Yeah, good stuff from Darren Jackson there. Nice bit of trickery. Craig Moore having a wee hot on, but this is where McKinley who whip in a really dangerous ball with that left foot of his. And he whipped it in a bit early, unfortunately for Celtic. Nobody was quite ready for it, and it curled well away. What a waste that was. 
Yeah, it certainly was. It's not late, Tosh McKinley, to waste a chance like that. The game now just seems to be drifting towards a 0-0 draw. Or will there be a frantic and fascinating finale? It might be if Burley's allowed to run here. Look at the space he's got in front of him. It cannon back off Amoruso and then bobbled harmlessly through to Charbonnier. Celtic half heartedly claimed the back pass then. Burley was really allowed to search through. Well, again, Craig Moore having been shoved out to right back to accommodate the return of Colin Hendry. Charbonnier hasn't been tested too often. Jonathan Gould will be able to tell him about a rather busier afternoon. But he did pull off that fantastic save to deny Larson in the first half. This kick by Meyer. Free kick, high feet from Charlie Miller. And Celtic are having the odd little burst as the game draws to a close. Yeah, this is where the nerves start to get to people. Mystique now, and it's all over. Stubbs with the free kick. Dropped down by Larson for Jackson. Well, really, a player of his quality would be expected to get a little closer to the target than he did with that. Well, that's Celtic's best chance of the match. Another marvellous lead for Larson, and really, Darren, from 15 yards out, would have fancied his chances, and he's just smashed it over the bar. That really would have been a kick in the face to Rangers. It was sky high. On Sky Sports, that one from Darren Jackson. Ferdy's header goes the wrong way, and Broncos lets it roll for the throw. Albert, oops, out of play, Celtic throw. What about a man of the match then for the first old firm showdown of the season? Well, it's been a good game. Uh, Rangers have been by far the more impressive team, with Alberts doing well, Van Brockhurst and Wallace up front. But I'm going for Henrik Larsson as Celtic. He's been very, very lively. He's created numerous chances for himself and teammates. And I just feel his overall performance merits the man of the match. Celtic now on the attack again. Burley's cross. Miller. And I said about that one the better. Yeah, not one of Charlie's better balls, but he's done well since he's come on. He injected a little bit of pace, passion, certainly with being a Scotsman. But alas, no goals. Here's Donnelly, though. Celtic are ending the game in some style, putting Rangers under the sort of pressure where Rangers have put Celtic under for most of the game. Burley's cross, chewed up by Colin Henry. Here's Larson, though, and that's an inviting cross. Missed by Moore, and McKinley! Oh, and Charbonnier with a spectacular save to tip it wide, because he must have seen that very, very late from McKinley. Well, I think you've seen his reaction. He didn't see any of this at all. What a strike from Dosh McKinley. Nearly got the fight, and that nearly squirmed in. you got to say, though, another magnificent save. He just pushed it past there, and Celtic nearly grabbed it to death. And into the danger zone it goes. Comes to Anoni. And another corner. But Celtic are really ending on a high. Well, this is a fabulous chance for Anoni again. He's got a clear straight from 18 yards. It's knocked down, it looks to be a bit holding on the goal there. But really hold on to Jackson, in fact. What a chance. Anoni wins the header and stops! Oh, what a drive from Alan Stubbs! The Celtic 
having been under the cosh for so long, nearly won this Ding Dong Derby. Oh, and only does fabulous there, a nice knockdown, what a strike from Alan Stubbs. It looks in the net all the way. Charbonne and Promise had it covered, but what a strike that is, inches over the bar. And Celtic, the last five minutes, have nearly scored three times. Wow, what an end to this game. Fouled by Noni on Miller. Now Rangers are going to go in search of a winner. Here's Miller. Miller turns. It's deflected. It ricochets. And it's cleared by Stubbs. Doing the business at the other end. It's a nice turn from Charlie Miller again. Alan Stubbs in danger of time in a derby. The best place is Rosehead. Goal kick, that'll be. He certainly has been lively, Charlie Miller, since coming on, but Celtic, it must be said, in the closing stages have been livelier. Well, it's been a great match, and the only thing, as we said at half time, Ian, it's incredible the amount of attempts at goal here and quality chances that not one of them has found the back of the net. The fourth official indicated, by the way, that there would be three minutes of added on time. Here's Burley. John's man of the match, Larson. Boyd with a throw. Can Celtic sneak it and go top of the Scottish Premier League? Not like that. I'll bet it's now to Van Bronckhorst. David Graves making a steaming run through the middle. Van Bronckhorst's run is not bad either. Looked like he had his shirt tucked then by Larson, but nothing's been given. Well, I think you're spotting near the end. And it's all over. And this enthralling, engaging, entertaining encounter somehow ends nil-nil. Dr Joe Menglos <laughs> might be happier than Dick Advocat, but maybe not, because Celtic had a flurry of chances in the final few minutes. And Alan Stubbs, with a splendid volley, was a matter of millimetres away from sending Celtic to the top of the table. Henrik Larsson was denied by an excellent first-half save from Lionel Charbonnier. Gabriel Amato should have scored his first Scottish Premier League goal, but he headed wide with the goal gaping. Tosh McKinley, substitute, was denied late on. This effort really looked like it was going to sneak and squirm its way in, and the touch from Charbonnier just, just steered it wide, and then Stubbs with that cracking volley nearly gave Celtic their first win here at Ibrox in four years. Nearly, but not quite, and that'll be the story, perhaps more so for Rangers than for Celtic, despite that flurry of activity at the end. Full time at Ibrox, great game, but it ends nil-nil. Well, it's been a great day of live football here on Sky Sports, and the big games just keep on coming. Here's a quick look at just some of the live games coming up for you in the next week. Tomorrow night from 7 on Sky Sports 1, Blackburn take on Chelsea. On Tuesday from 7.30 on Sky Sports 2, it's Worthington Cup action, West Ham versus Northampton. And on Thursday, it's off to Old Trafford for Manchester United against Liverpool. And to round off the football week, we're back here next Sunday night from 6 for Aberdeen versus Kilmarnock. It's a great week of live football ahead on our three Sky Sports channels. But here at Ibrox this evening, the first Old Firm game of the season finished nil-nil. What a finish to the 90 minutes, though. Rejoin us for a look back on the 90 minutes just after this. Time to the Neumann, Eric Meyer. A few seconds left, then they go out. Now it goes through an etwa 25 meter long tunnel. Kein Stollen geklacker da unten, wohl gedämpft über einen Teppich geht. Nette Geste der Schotten, dass sie unsere Kamera da reingelassen haben. Service für sie zu Hause und jetzt kommen sie raus.
spätestens jetzt ist die Situation eingetreten. So haben es die Spieler gestern beim Training alle gesagt, wo wir eine dicke, dicke Gänsehaut haben werden. Unvergessliche Atmosphäre hier im Ibrox Park. 50.000. Ein großes Willkommen.